So Kasser, I am very, very excited to be speaking to you today. Likewise. Yes, Gina. <laughs> Hi, especially after, well, first of all, I have to say I really, really love Fast Track. I think <laughs> that Amina Dewan is like an excellent addition to the show. Mm -hmm. And it's just been so great um, seeing you perform on The Flash. Thank you. It's been so much fun. And also just seeing that people are resonating with the character has been all the more fun. So yeah, I'm, I'm duly excited. <laughs> it's been a quite a journey for you though, because uh, when we started the CW television uh, year, we were with you as Soraya on 4400 and you yeah. didn't have powers, and but no. you were a tech whiz. But now you do have powers as Dr. Mina Dewan and you're a speedster. So what was and that I'm journey like? Tech with. Yes. yes, you're a genius, actually, like leveled up, as the flash fighters would say. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 fun. And yeah, it was funny because in the 4400, I was like one of the only characters who didn't have powers. And then this comes around um, and definitely have them. But I guess the, the like the nerd thing is sticking around, the, the yeah. tech person is sticking around. <laughs> but I am for it. But it's also pretty funny because I'm very technologically challenged in my real life. So. Thus, so, thus, thus is acting. <laughs> true, true. Um, which I mean, is good because I think there's a with your character, there's a nice balance of her being like a genius, but then also being someone who's new to the speedster world. So you get to do, you get to have um, both sides of the line there. Yeah, I think one was one, one of the like most freeing things was uh, in the first episode that I shot where we sort of reveal Mina that one. Uh, it was the director was Daniel Banabaker and she was like you can practice your zooming but just like don't be too good you know because <laughs> like the whole pro the whole intention of it was that flash helps Dr. Mina that one get better so when I was practicing how to like zoom I was also practicing how do I kind of make it look like I'm flailing and falling a little bit too <laughs> so there was a natural progression in terms of learning about all that that I really appreciated and then by the fourth one I yeah, think my zooms were a little better. I hope. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely tell that they're better. Uh, I also <laughs> like that um, because we start at the beginning of Mina's journey. We also get the reveal of first we have her disguise, which I really liked. I wasn't sure if that was a nod to her heritage because it's a scarf and then a face covering. Um, and if it is a nod to her heritage, were you involved in that decision, or was that always the plan before we got to the actual costume? I think. And perhaps costume designer Kate Main, who's brilliant and amazing, is probably best to speak on that. I don't think it was a nod to it. I think it was truly just trying to cover up. They were also oh, okay. kind of pulling, I think, from their own inspiration. Um, yeah, and and you know, I, I I'd be. I think if it was a nod to it, I might have uh, pushed back on it a little bit. Actually, okay. if if there was that connection, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I did think it was interesting, though, how we do start, like, they allude to her costume, because we start with her in all black anyway, and then by the time that we get to her full-blown speedster um, outfit, it is, it's very much giving the negative force that she is learning to be of in command of. Yeah, and you kind of see what I love was, it was, that was a conversation with Kate Maine, actually, about how, like, black being sort of this through line and silver, small things, but like even the jewelry was largely silver the whole time, to sort of honor that. And uh, seeing the progression of that outfit also felt like that, that like standard superhero thing that you see where like, you know, they have the outfit they made at home and then they get a real one that's made of tighter spandex and it's, it's, it's their iconic outfit. <laughs> and how did it feel um, putting on the suit for the first time? Well, it was very tight, um, I will say that. <laughs> um, and the whole time, like I, whenever I was either putting it on or taking it off, it totally was a 10 minute process, but so much fun. Um, but honestly, even when I was in it, it was it was a very surreal feeling um, to just look in the mirror and be like, oh my God, I'm, I'm wearing this thing. Um, it also made me, you know, feel, uh, like I could probably like pick fights when I normally couldn't or, you know, beat people up though I normally can't in real life. But, you know, that's superhero confidence that comes with the suit. 
That's true. And you did actually kick a lot of butt in the la- in negative part <laughs> one, uh, right before things went left. Uh, but it's interesting how uh, integral Mina is to the last part of, of season eight. Did you know going in that they were going to throw you into the thick of things and give you a romance? Or did that happen along the way? Yeah, I had no idea. Even when I got the sides initially, I didn't know what I was sort of getting myself into, but it was so much fun. And it was also just uh, such a joy to sort of have so many ups and downs within the character within four episodes, you really got to see the whole arc of our emotions. And even in the next episode from the finale, you get to see even a bigger arc of it. So from an acting point of view, it was just like a very juicy way to step into a role that I'm grateful for. Uh, yeah, I, I expect that when we get to the finale, after all of the screaming, which by the way, Mina was a mood in that moment <laughs> when uh, like Eobard, as we know him, um, outside of her her love, uh, appears or rips his face off, uh, was a lot. What was it like uh, shooting that scene? So it was very cold. And I think it was very, very early in the morning, one of our night shoots. Uh, but also so fun. I mean, I got to scream bloody murder over and over again. So I enjoyed it, you know. <laughs> and um, I think also just the, the the moment of it is kind of a big moment for Mina. She's this is the person she's loved who's gotten, gotten her through so much. So from that aspect, it was from that aspect is really fun. And then on top of it, just seeing the way they put that together, how they worked with the VFX to make it look like this man was ripping his face off uh, was very cool. And it was also wild seeing the prosthetics on the floor. Not cute. Not cute when he's ripping it off and not cute when it's on the floor. <laughs> Equally <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> uh, and so are we, can you tease a little bit about the finale? I'm assuming we're starting like immediately after that moment happens, but like emotionally for Mina, are we, I know she's been balancing the line of like not letting the negative force corrupt her as a person. Now that she doesn't have Eobard, she would be worried about uh, the direction for her character. I, what I will say is that uh, in the second part, part, we get to see a little bit more of all of Mina's emotions and sort of what, what she goes through. Um, and I think Mina's purpose is, is also internally as a person is also shooken up a little. So we get to see an exploration of that. I'm excited. Um, And I really do hope, um, and I'm not sure if you can tell us or not, but just because we haven't gotten to the season finale yet, but I'd love to see Mina in season nine. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I would, I love Mina. She's a very, very dear character to my heart. And you know, we'll, we'll have to see, but I know that it's, um, it's something I would be excited about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm on like, I'm going to manifest it. That's what we Thank do. Thank you. Um, we'll we'll manifest here. it. Yes. We'll manifest, manifest it together. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to circle back to one question, um, and I hope it's okay if I ask this, but you said you would push back if, it, um, Mina's, uh, and I guess her disguise, if it had been based on her heritage, uh, what do you mean by that? Absolutely. So I think portrayals of Muslims in the media is already fairly stark and misrepresented, misrepresented. And so often, you know, we affiliate uh, the hijab or the head covering with Muslim women. And it definitely is a part of our culture and religion. But also Muslims are not a monolith. And we Mm -hmm. exist in so many ways with or without hijabs. I am a Muslim woman. I don't cover. And um, and I also have many Muslim friends who do cover. But I think so often that's all we see in the media. So I think my pushback would be the questions of if this is something that is inspired by the heritage or one, is Mina Dawan Muslim, which is not something that was touched on in the book, in the comic book. So is that even a thing or are we conflating South Asians and Muslim folks? And then on top of that, um, if she is a Muslim woman, is she really one that covers all the time or is it just something that's being thrown into the disguise? And I think it is an interesting thing because, you know, t- typically superheroes do cover up. Um, and I think I'm, I, it's also one of those things where like, I've sort of gotten that before, you know, if I'm wearing a head covering, people assume that it's because, or just a scarf on my head, people assume that it's because it's a practice of me being Muslim when really maybe that moment I'm just wearing a scarf on my head. And if I had lighter skin and different features, that wouldn't be the assumption. So I think my pushback overall would be 
an intention of diversifying what we think of as Muslim and, and who we see of as Muslim and how do Muslims exist on our screens. Mm, okay. I think that's a personal some unpacking for me. I appreciated this discussion. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, one last question, because um, I know that you also have the final season of uh, the Jurassic Park animated series on Netflix. Um, so if you could just tease a little bit about what's to come for your character. Absolutely. I love this series. We've seen like four seasons so far of these kids essentially running for their lives <laughs> from dinosaurs. And we get to see sort of what that leads up to in season five. And it's also a totally different sphere in sort of this Jurassic canon franchise as well as to what they're up against. And as always, the animation is beautiful. And as always, we get to see these kids experience things in a different way. And personally, my character, Yaz Fadula, we get to see a side of her we haven't seen before that I am so, so excited to share back. And I feel that has been, you know, brewing throughout. So I'm, I'm so, so excited for everybody to check out season five of Jurassic Five as well. Jurassic Five, I just said Jurassic Five. Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure it's going to be just as exciting as it has been for you to be as fast track. Um, mm -hmm. I cannot wait until to see the rest of, of Mina's journey on the show. Like we said, manifesting for her appearance in season nine. There we go. Um, and it's been lovely talking to you, Kasar. Thanks. And thanks for the thoughtful questions. And it was so good talking to you as well.